Well, a very good afternoon. Welcome back to Novi Mesto in the Czech Republic for continuation of their second week of Bath and World Cup action. It's the women's sprint this afternoon, raced over 7.5k and possibly, Mike, a little bit of history to be made. Yes, Tyrell Ekhoff, her run of success with uh, five in a row, she could uh, make that a record at uh, six today. And uh, her recent form would show uh, she can, but will the nerves get to her today? How many athletes might chew gum just before the start of a biathlon? Uh, <laughs> it always amazes me every time I see that, but they've all got their own ways of warming up, uh, psyching themselves up for the big event. And Ekhoff actually has got a really good start number, starting number 30. Uh, the only two big names, huge names behind it, Roisland starts 33, Elvira Erberg starts 36. Uh, Roisland could be a threat to her win, certainly, on her regained form, but uh, Ekhoff, I think, would have taken bib 30 if you'd offered it to her. Denise Herman probably would have rejected number one. So here we go, and uh, just two sprints left of the season. By my calculations, the uh, Sprint World Cup has already been won by Tyrell Ekhoff. She's on 388. Roisland on 302 can only get to 348. Uh, Mike, I've seen, uh, again, uh, some people saying she hasn't won it yet, others saying she has. I feel she has. I think she has indeed, uh, of course, with the new uh, system with COVID, uh, more results taking away than normal. That could well be the confusion. It certainly complicates things. Uh, in terms of the overall, the only person uh, who, only two people who can catch uh, Ekhoff are, of course, uh, her teammate Roisland and Hannah Erberg. And we still have the four events to go after today, the pursuit tomorrow. And then we head to Ustersen for the last round of the World Cup. Julie Simon, Mike, uh, pretty consistently fast all the way through the season. I've been uh, impressed with the skiing. When she increases her reliability on the range, she's 74 in the prone. That really is where she's come unstuck this year. Yes, and Simon, uh, I think for me, a huge surprise when she took those two consecutive uh, Mastar competitions, Antholz and Oberhof. Starting number four is uh, Vishnaskaya Sheparenko, and uh, for Kazakhstan, certainly capable of uh, 
getting in the top 20. Her PB of fourth. Uh, that was back in 2017. I haven't quite seen a return to that sort of form. And it uh, be interesting to see what she does today. Now 27. Shooting pretty well. Estonia's Tallyherm goes number five, and she has a mass of uh, uh, big names behind her. Mike again, Vera and Vitozzi drawn just a minute apart. What a battle those two have had. Uh, and, and so good to see Lisa Vitozzi coming up. I'm wondering whether uh, Lucas Hoffer's success yesterday in the men's sprint is going to affect things at all with the Italians today. Often it does, and uh, without doubt, Hoffer's, uh, Lucas Hoffer's skis were running very well. That's all factors, but they play the big part. And what about uh, Vera last week, fifth? I really thought she could podium in the pursuit, but she finished at 34th. Uh, one of our worst drop-off performances from sprint, sprint to pursuit. Yeah, I think you know. I think she's known for a month or so that she wasn't going to retain the overall World Cup title. Didn't get off to a good enough start this season. Just missed out. She was unlucky at the Worlds, Mike. A fourth. Uh, she had a fifth in the single mix relay, a ninth in the individual. She was nearly there, but not quite. Mary Ada for Finland, uh, ranked number 47 in the world, so uh, should come to qualify for the pursuit fairly easily. Uh, and actually. I thought her form looked pretty good last week. Top 20 in the sprint. Yes, uh, her ski speed was excellent. Probably the best of the season. So, Mary Ader, and, and often we see Mary Ader coming strong at the end of the season. Uh, she took her only victory, remember, in Oslo, and that was towards the end of the season. In fact, it was the last sprint and pursuit competition. Here's Lisa Vitozzi. Uh, she's looking pretty lean and skiing really well. Certainly in the start gate, Mike, she looks hungrier than she did earlier on in the season. Things just weren't working for in Contiolati. Uh, had a pretty good uh, sprint event in Hockfels and finished seventh there shooting 0-0. But then had a few disasters. Three misses in the second week in Hockfels and six misses in uh, Oberhof. That was a disaster. Have a come over now. 37th last week, uh, only missing, sorry, 57th last week, only missing one target, so the ski speed is lacking. She moved up to 54th in the pursuit, but uh, again, missing uh, four targets. And she's going to be followed out of the start gate by Justine Brazar Boucher. And Brazar. Boucher looking uh, fairly comfortable last week, really good sprint, top 10, then dropped away in the pursuit, missing uh, seven targets in all, so way, way, way below what we normally see from her. And uh, she's right on the border of the top 15 in the World Cup, Mike, so a good race today, pretty essential, uh, considering the pursuit tomorrow, if she wants to finish top 15 at the end of the season. Yes, as Vera's had a, a decent start here, I know we're only uh, less than a kilometer, but uh, I think she'll be okay, happy with two seconds behind Herman. And I think Herman, uh, with uh, her performances last week, must have uh, rebuilt confidence. Second in the first World Cup, and then second last week. Nothing in between. Lynn Persson for Sweden, and the Swedish women have been uh, not, not consistently strong all the way through the season. They certainly took us by surprise with incredible form in the first two weeks of the year. And then it dropped off when we went to Austria for week number three. Uh, but pretty solid, led, of course, by Hannah Erberg, who's been uh, the best all the way through. Camilla Zuck now for Poland. Very full program. She raced at the World Championships. Now, Vitozzi with uh, a pretty fast start, almost at the uh, split. There you go, third position, just ahead of Julia Simon. No doubt that her form is better than it's been at any stage of the season. I guess she's going to look at that, Mike, as we see Herman come into the range. Vitozzi will look at the programme and maybe bring it forward just a touch next year. Yes, it's, it's all about getting the balance right, isn't it? And uh, for Denise Herman here, in terms of conditions on the range, pretty much perfect. Uh, and she's adjusted there. That's because of the wind during the zeroing earlier. One miss Off. in the prone last week. <laughs> left, right, left, right. Like most good people in the military, Mike. 
<laughs> I think she was a little lucky. Was it the third shot? It was an edge at, uh, what, seven o'clock? Look at the time she takes to get the poles on. Yes, it's it's maybe half a second, a uh, second less than the best, but it all adds up. Get those arms in gear fast and uh, you pick up momentum after the shooting. Now, Francisca Preutz, another very good skier. I'll tell you what I'd enjoy, Mike, to see all the biathletes uh, from, well, in fact, uh, worldwide, but particularly from Germany over time, all the top biathletes from Germany racing without the rifles just to see who really was the quickest. Uh, Neuner, probably. Dalmeier would be right up there. Wilhelm would be up there. They had so many quick skiers over the years. And Ushi Diesel, don't forget Ushi. She was a real fighter. Yeah, talking about Diesel, if Ekhoff wins today, she matches Diesel's record of uh, 12 wins. Top three in the uh, all-time standings. Oh, that's a scrappy shoot from Julia Simon. Race over. Uh, so disheartening for her and, of course, for the rest of the squad. She missed there, Patrick, by two and a half centimetres at least, and that uh, is totally unsighted. So it's a major snatch of the rifle through to the left because there was no point there squeezing the trigger that it, was, uh, that it looked like a good shot. So an absolute snatch to the left. Now, this looks uh, reasonably competitive time. Herman 3.7, Brazar Boucher is uh, very, very quick. Wow, that's uh, a lightning start. And uh, we'll see how she gets on. Started number 10, Brazar Boucher, Chevalier Boucher, not far off uh, the mark. Now, Dorothea Vera, It'd be nice to see one of her vintage shoots. Well, her ski speed looks uh, looks even better. Look at that, only 3.3 seconds behind Herman, and uh, she lost four of them uh, within the first 900 metres. Not the perfect rhythm, but the perfect result for Dorothy Vera. And have a look at the time. 15 seconds still in hand over Herman, who was pretty sluggish exiting the range, but took uh, a little bit longer with the preparation. Is Vera going to match it? I think she is. Really good start for the Italian. And uh, Vitozzi, who started number eight, will uh, see if she can match that in around 30 seconds' time. Look at uh, Ada, her right elbow, she, she's muscling it. Uh, she had to move it, two moves. It's never great moving that right uh, elbow. She's got it fixed again. Hopefully the next two will go down. Oh. Frustration. Here we go with Vitozzi. Oh, what was that about? She hit five last week and made it look easy and finished on the podium. So this time it's Vera who's clear. Vitozzi who has failed three misses, Mike, 450 metres. Uh, it's only a 7,500 metre race. So that's well, well, well over 6% added. And uh, I don't think we're going to see her again uh, throughout the race. I find it quite amazing, Vitozzi. Last week you said 10 out of 10. She looked perfect in this race. And then it week later she's missing three out of five i can't understand what's going on there but a change i think needs to to happen in the summer to fix the position more firmly now brazil boucher remember the fastest through that early split and the fastest into the range by some margin That was a good shot to finish, and just what she wanted to see. <laughs> now, that's going to be a, a decent lead. Yeah, Jean-Paul, uh, his eyebrows raising up there. I can't believe that uh, that it's she's so fast into the range. 12 seconds ahead of Ada and 12.8 uh, ahead of Herman. Yeah, that's a very, very handy start. We've only had... Uh, Unbelievably, Mike, eight sprints. We've only had three different winners. Hannah Erberg, of course, who's coming up now, won the first two. Uh, Ekhoff has won the last five. And Olimba Carver from uh, Belarus won World Cup number three, which was the first week we had in uh, Hogfilsen. 
So uh, it'd be nice to see the French getting a share of the spoils. I have to say at the first and then the second World Cup, the way that Hannah Oberg uh, had improved with those two wins, I thought she was going to be out and out leader this season, but she lost her way, didn't she? Her form dropped off a few more podiums, well, four more second places, two more third places, but no more victories. So, uh, Chevalier Boucher, she adjusted the, the sights anti-clockwise, uh, so she must have turned them to the to clockwise into the wind uh, during zeroing. The wind's dropped away, so she's pulled them back. Didn't entirely work. Uh, she, ideally, five out of five would have been her per preferred score. Now, Denise Herman with a good start, still after that first shoot, lying in third place. 11 seconds off the pace, but if this goes down, you can bet your bottom dolly you're going to see a pretty fast last two and a half K. Excellent shooting. Denise Herman back on uh, her best form in terms of the shooting. Now, 11 seconds, I said, behind uh, Justine Brezard Boucher. That's quite a big margin. We'll see whether the French athlete can keep that pace going. Uh, Herman again, Mike, slow to exit. You'd expect to see a bit more urgency, especially having downed uh, 10 targets. Well, she likes those fixed uh, Velcro straps. They, 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 she likes them to get the energy through. But yes, losing maybe two seconds uh, by putting them on. Yeah, Preutz losing 11 seconds to Brezar Boucher coming in. Uh, Brezar Boucher, uh, she's eight seconds ahead of everyone. Hannah Sola actually is the second fastest. Uh, Sola yet to exit. She's wearing 14. Tandra Vold with a clear shoot last week. Uh, I thought she might have been heading for a podium finish, but didn't quite have the speed. Had a very early start last week. It was a, it was an immaculate performance by her. Tyrell Ekhoff, is it going to be record day today? Looking for her sixth successive sprint win in the World Cup. No man, no woman has ever achieved that. It's a big ask, Mike. She's won the last five, which included, of course, the World Championships. Uh, it's been an incredible run of form from uh, Ekhoff. The problem with records, she will have been informed, uh, the press have been in touch with her about today as a huge occasion, and uh, she's been so relaxed lately that I do wonder if that'll unsettle her. She was very calm on the first lap, very calm on the second lap, then full pace on the last lap last week. Looks a little more tense today. Yeah, and I tell you what, if Brezar Boucher shoots clear when she comes into the stand, uh, that is going to be a tough time to match, particularly if uh, Ekhoff uh, misses one target. This season, she's had the luxury of being able to miss and still win races by taking 25 to 30 seconds off everyone. Now, Vera. No mistakes in the prone, as you can see. The standing has not been as good this year as it's been in the two years that she's won the overall World Cup. 85%, but that is as good as it gets. 10 down, four seconds spare coming in over Herman. Erberg needs to win, really, to put any pressure on Roisland and Ekhoff today. She's been uh, third and second, and she was leading the World Cup early season. And Vera is out, 3.6 to play with. That's going to be an interesting battle, Mike. Uh, so far, they've pretty much been even. Coming into the range for the first time, uh, Vera was 16 seconds slower than Brezar Boucher, and Herman was 12, so uh, not much between them. Roisland. Potential winner, certainly, but she has not won a sprint so far this year. And in fact, she's only had two podiums, but uh, she's second in the sprint standings on the back of some very, very consistent racing. But uh, from my calculations, whatever she does here and in Ostersund, she cannot catch Tyrell Ekhoff.
Aline Bekova, she started uh, the season so well. And, uh, and again, for me, I thought she may be a real contender. Uh, she took a win on World Cup 5, and uh, that was a sprint pursuit. She came second. That was the uh, first week of Hawk Hawkville since pre-Christmas. Now, Brezard Boucher, keep an eye on her targets. Five down. Well, there's the first miss. So, uh, oh, the winner's gone. The win has gone. That is very, very sad for the French team. Quickest coming in by some margin. It's a real pity. She doesn't. Uh, she doesn't have. Uh, except maybe three races a season where she's in the zone and can stabilize very calm through the rifle today very tense for those first two shots and good discipline to take the last three yeah 15 seconds clear of vera coming in as we watch tandra Bolt settle uh shooting left-handed simonada does the same how many left-handers can you rattle off mike <laughs> Tandrevolt, Eder. <laughs> Aim. <laughs> uh, well, allow you to go back in time. You can go back in time. Oh, it's gone blank. Uh, it's, we, we've got five current uh, in the four in the women's field right now. Uh, Tom and Gas, I think she may well be one Estonian. Uh, we'll hopefully see another. <laughs> right, let's see what Herman has managed to do. She's been competitive all the way through, still sitting in second place after that second shoot behind Dorothy and Vera, but she made it look as if she was on a stroll there. 18.17, not a bad race at all. 18.48 won the race last week, so uh, maybe it will be Herman's day. We will see. Vera with a three-second advantage going into the last lap, but I just didn't see the life in Herman that we used to see, what, the last two seasons, Mike? It didn't feel that way. It can be deceptive. She's very, very strong on her skis and uh, a little bit uh, like Bolshinov in the, in the male cross-country side. He's, he's so strong. He makes it look like he's skiing slowly. Yeah, more power, slower tempo. That's absolutely true. But I still didn't get the feeling that she was full of life as we watch Chevalier Boucher trying to down five, won this in the prone. Actually skiing okay, to be honest. Fourth place coming in, 39 seconds. Add another 25 to that. So uh, she's going to be a minute off the pace. And that uh, will struggle to make the top 15 today. Jean-Paul looks now pained with Brezat Boucher missing the first two out of the five shot standing and uh, and uh, now Chevalier Boucher two in total. Preutz has just moved into second place in the, on the entry into the range and that is behind Brezat Boucher who has missed in the stand. Oh, that's a shame. Four out of five uh, is still going to be reasonably good. I think we're looking at top six or seven when she comes out. But there was an opportunity to take four or five seconds out of Dorothy Vera if she'd gone clear. Lena Gasparin just coming in, Mike, and Tyrell Ekhoff started 30 seconds behind her. So uh, in the next 10 seconds or so, we should see Ekhoff appear round the corner, take her position on the range for the first time today. Uh, still looking for times coming into the shoot. Ekhoff has gone second fastest, three seconds down on Brezard Boucher. Dorothy Vera, there's uh, Ekhoff's targets at last. First one down, working left to right as Vera comes in, trying to take the lead away from Denise Herman. Oh, she's tired over the last lap. She had three and a half seconds to play with, and Vera has missed the opportunity. So uh, just as you said, Mike, Herman is deceptively fast. Uh, yes, very, very powerful skier. 4.4, what's that? Eight second switch. I'm surprised. Uh, Ekhoff, another great start. She takes the lead time. I was really surprised with Vera, she was uh, on her last lap on Hannah Uberg's uh, second lap. I thought Uberg might have helped her on the on the chase for Herman if she tucked in behind Uberg. I love that skate too of Tyrell Ekhoff's. The tempo is high. Uh, the timing is absolute perfection as she works her way out of the stadium. Oh. 
Well, this is a, a very good time into the range uh, for the second time. For Hannah Uberg, she needs five. Oh. What a shame, all that early season magic uh, and, and no energy getting out of the range. Those two shots, two missed targets, uh, it's really zapped her of all confidence there and not in a, in a real hurry anymore to get out. Reuschland, uh, although it says 8.4 there, that's behind the leader at the moment. She was 11.4 into the range behind. Oh. Interesting, interesting. A lot of big names being loose with the rifle. Uh, what do we got? The top 12 after the first shoot have gone clear, but we've only got 14 clear out of the 23 athletes through the range for the first time. So the percentages are not particularly high at the moment. As far as the second shoot goes, we've only got three out of 17. Brazar Boucher chasing a good time. Herman's gonna survive on 817. Brazar Boucher was 35 behind after the uh, second shoot. This is must be Lisa Bitozzi coming in. And uh, Bitozzi going down into fifth place. Remember, she did three penalty loops on the prone and then cleared all the targets in the stand. 35 behind coming out of the range and actually loses two seconds. So I have to take it back. I thought Herman looked sluggish, but uh, Mike, she's gone and done it again. Two really <laughs> solid, consistent laps. Uh, yes, again, looking so smooth. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe, just maybe, depends on Tyrell Ekhoff and possibly some challenges from further back. And maybe Chloe Chevalier could be a challenger today. Start 75. Well, this is good uh, news for Elvira Erberg. Uh, good start from her, only 6.5 out. Uh, big battle for the blue bib, which she wears at the moment. Alim Bekova is uh, her main rival in that particular competition. This is looking much better from Elvira. And again, her, like her sister, her early season was excellent. She had two third places then. Not much since. Just uh, she gave up on that, didn't give up, but the rifle wasn't pointing to the target. She wanted out in a hurry, and uh, that cost her the final shot. But did you see the time she came in, Mike? That's one of Tandervold's best skis ever. 14 off the place of Brazar, pace of Brazar Boucher, who went and missed targets. So uh, that was another winning opportunity thrown away for Tandervold as we watch Paulina Fialkova with a second shoot, another two missed. We still only have three athletes clear after the second shoot. Yeah, it's good to see Fialkova, and her ski speed was excellent in the pursuit last week, only 11 seconds off the fastest. She must have thought she had a chance for a podium, but really panicked in her stand shoot. So Chevalier Boucher up into fourth becomes the uh, second uh, of the French. Uh, Brazard Boucher in third position at the moment. A minute between the top four as we watch Preutz across the line and she changes the podium position. So Germany, Italy, Germany in the top three at the moment. And it's not going to be long, Mike, before Tyrell Ekhoff comes in for that all-important second shoot. Ekhoff leading at 4.1 and uh, she's got a lead of some three seconds over, over Brazard Boucher, who she was behind coming into the first shoot. Now, I think Mike, uh, trying to do the calculations, but I think uh, Tyrell Ekhoff might be able to afford a miss and still be very close to Dorothea Vera's time. Yes, uh, I've got her at 4.1 kilometers, uh, leading Brezaz time by 3.3 seconds. Yeah, and 19 uh, seconds uh, clear of Denise Herman. That's a, a nice comfort zone, especially when Ekhoff can uh, punch, can push a, 
a real fast last lap. She always saves a little something when, for when it's needed. That's a nice solid shoot. Uh, light conditions, Mike, how, how did you like sort of zeroing with half light, half daylight, half uh, floodlights, and then switching I, I to the full floodlights? I didn't like it at all. You can, you can feel it the days previously in training, but uh, it does make a difference. Five out of five, and Ekhoff is going into the record books with Saul. Oh, now it's going to be a big question. This is all important. She delays a touch, gets it down. The race is still on. 35 seconds to play with as the last target goes down. Only 17 ahead of Dorothy Vera. Uh, we can convert that to around 25, Mike. This is going to be so, so close. And this is where Ekhoff needs that punch. But she's put a pretty fast second lap in, Mike, uh, considering she was three and a half, four seconds down on Brazar Boucher after lap number one. Yes, I think I still feel safe for uh, Tyrrell Ekhoff uh, to, to pass to whether she comes out of the range uh, behind, but uh, she'll be faster, I think, than Herman. Yeah. Garshikova looking good there. 50% of the sprints have been won by an athlete missing one target. <laughs> On every occasion, that has been Tyrrell Ekhoff. Uh, most others having to hit a uh, 10 out of 10. Erberg, likewise. Those two misses in the stand have cost her. But positions all important today in terms of World Cup points. And uh, Erberg wants a decent start in the pursuit tomorrow. Oh, she looks so tired from that sparky, dynamic move she had all of uh, December and carried it into January. But looks very tired right now. Yeah, if she can get herself up into the top six, she's done well. I think, uh, what's it going to be? Oh, she's dropped down over the last kilometre. Another place lost. And 107 off the leading time. She's lost, Mike, she's lost an enormous amount. Uh, what's that? Eight seconds lost to Herman over the last 900 metres. Oh, that's a huge margin. Eh? And it's, it's these, I think it's more, more body fatigue. This is great for... Aline Bekova, she's uh, fourth at last time uh, at 6.6 .6 kilometers. Not quite uh, fast enough to touch the podium. Yeah, take away the miss. And she would have been challenging Herman. Uh, what's she going to be? She was uh, some 21 seconds behind last time we saw her. So another couple of seconds lost to Denise Herman in the closing stages and she goes down into four. Good start in the pursuit tomorrow. That's a little bit of consolation uh, for missing out on the top three. Now, Roisland, two misses early on. She knows her chance is gone. Roisland and Erberg, Mike, are handing it to Ekhoff. Gifting it away with uh, poor shooting, although Ekhoff, uh, that one little glitch, that one target missed, but uh, she, of course, went out of the range in second place, but that was behind Vera. Ekhoff has gone through 5.9, and having been 2.1 uh, down on Vera, she finds herself now 0.4 down on Herman. And uh, Herman actually out-skiing Ekhoff over the first kilometre of that last loop. So uh, that will be interesting, Mike. She'll get all the information she needs as we watch Claire Egan, the best of the Americans this year by uh, some way. Susan Dunkley just hasn't found form this season. Oh, Claire Elvira. Egan, that was such a good time into the range, but it can't afford to miss targets. If this goes down, Erdberg puts herself in a good position for the uh, taking the blue bib come the end of the season. She's uh, in 12th in the overall standings, was up in the top four for the first half of the season. Tan Revolt into the finish. Another of the big names has thrown too wide in the stand and a minute down just squeezes in ahead of Chevalier Boucher and Julia Simon. Elvira Erberg. Now she's going to be pushed on the last loop. 13.1 and fourth place at the moment. She's got a 
that's a tough task. Vera, Ekoff and Herman. Those are the three ahead of her. Uh, she's going to have to find something special. And now Ekoff starts to turn it up, Mike. As soon as she got the split that she was behind uh, Herman, she has absolutely exploded. Well, actually, that's really my hard. mistake. V v Vera leading at 5.9, isn't she? Was leading at 5.9. Now it's Ekoff at 6.6. .6. Yes, and then she loves this terrain. She says this is her favourite course and the, un the huge climb after the bridge. Yeah, I think that's where Echo really started punching harder and uh, it's still not uh, a victory in hand. She has to work for it. Herman was fast over the last loop. How was uh, the not yeah. another Yeah, not another podium, but uh, much, much better than last week. Uh, well, she was down in the 40s last week. Nice little bit of free skating from uh, Ekoff. That's how she got herself the uh, bronze medal in the mass start. Very, very much quicker than anyone else without the poles. Uh, keeps the tempo high. Ekoff into the finish now. 40 seconds to play with. She's the only one that's managed to go into the dynamic dance up this final climb. She makes it look so easy. Ekoff heading for win number six. It looks like Herman's time, 18.17. 27 seconds to play with. The margins are going to be small. Three seconds to lead at 6.6 900 meters to survive that pace and now with 100 meters to go Ekoff still has 16 seconds she's there and comfortably so this is another brilliant performance being cheered on by her teammates Tanrevold winning her in 6.1 my goodness league of her own and win number six incredible absolutely astonishing no one has ever achieved that in the sprint event in the history of biathlon. So uh, Tyrrell Ekhoff just continuing this run of form. Oh, what a, what a shame. Eh? Her big sister Paulina missing two in the prone and now uh, Ivona missing so many in the stand. Uh, they're both skiing really well. They've, they've found their form towards the end of the season, but they need to refine their form on the rifle. Selena Gasparin just finishing, going into the top ten. <laughs> the veteran on the tour and she shows uh, that you really don't have to give up when you get to your 30s or even your mid 30s uh, still producing some very very solid results Mike top top 10 again is is fantastic for her uh, just a shame that early season we didn't see any of that sort of form but 18 11 uh, the leading time here with Denise Herman demoted down into second place uh, nice to see Herman on the podium. I'm assuming she's going to stay there. I know it's early days because we had, what did we have, over 100 starters, uh, 104 starters in all today. Well, Pushkashikova, she could have done with five hits here, but uh, surprisingly, the big names, uh, Davidova, bib number 89 today, and uh, on form in terms of skiing speed. Shavatova starting at 97. Now, that's local knowledge. They must be expecting the tracks to ice over as the sun drops down, uh, completely gone, in fact. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if it's an advantage. Yeah, I was, we saw the, the local team do that yesterday, Mike, and I didn't think it really paid dividends. We thought the tracks had cut up enough to make it much, much harder work, even if you were gliding a little bit faster. What about Roisland coming in 45 seconds down? And both Roisland and Hannah Urban way, way off the standard set by Tyrrell Ekhoff. Another step closer to the Crystal Globe. The Sprint Globe is secure, has been secured for a while, but the overall all globe, Mike, uh, looking more and more as if it's going to stay in Norway. I'm still uh, almost in disbelief. We've never seen an athlete, uh, men or women, uh, take six in a row in terms of sprint competitions. Ekov is completely in ownership of this race this season, except for the first two World Cups where she looked really as if she hadn't had a good summer, but she's had a great summer and a fabulous winter. That's what, 11 victories if she remains at the top uh, and that's a very good score for any season for any person now Elvira Erberg was looking good for a top five when she left the range for the second time she was in fourth place just 13 seconds down she's faded a little on this last loop but uh, you've got to remember 
as one of the under 25 athletes. She has done exceptionally well. Erberg in 12th position in the uh, under 25, in 12th position overall, 4th position as far as the under 25s go. Tandervold, Alimbekova, and uh, we've got uh, Davidova ahead of her, but that's a really good run. And 6th place for now. She claws a couple of places back over that last kilometre and dives into the prone position. Oh, totally exhausted. You can give no more, and uh, she would have loved a podium, but uh, she's well set up for the pursuit competition tomorrow. Ten seconds separating the top three. Uh, it was 15 seconds last week, and a minute. We've only got nine athletes within a minute of each other. Last week, Mike, we had 21. Yes, uh, it's strange. Uh, when At the start of the race, when... Denise Herman started with bib number one. I thought, are we going to see a bib number one win today? And, and, and I do think the conditions, they were nice and icy as she set off. Small advantage, although Ekov was bib 30, but really did uh, have the overview of the whole race over the big names ahead. Kadurish of Switzerland, uh, as we watch uh, Schweiger of Austria across the line. That's, that's a good run, actually. Schweiger deserves a lot of credit for that performance. And um, Lisa Theresa House has been taking all the headlines in the Austrian team. So Schweiger, 25-year-old from uh, Salfelden, she'll be absolutely thrilled with that. Now, Ida Lien. Tough team to get into, tough team to stay in, the Norwegian team. Could do with finishing the season with uh, some top performances. Gives She's over a, a second more. away. I was going to say, yeah. Mike, loses a second to Vera on every shot. Yes, I was going to say exactly that, but a little more cautious. But you still believed in her. The, the drill was perfect. She managed to get a one, two breaths in between each shot. And, and it really looked, uh, for me, it looked a very stable and I had confidence in her to get these five. Uh, but it was a little slow. Out goes Susan Dunkley. You don't need to see the bib number to know, uh, or the ski suit for that matter, to know exactly who it is. But I'll tell you what, fourth place, that is absolutely excellent. If she could find, uh, what have we got, nine seconds. That's nine seconds up to Herman on the last lap. Yeah, having just said, Dunkley hasn't shown much, <clears throat> much form this season. It's all been about Claire Egan. Well, Egan is now down in 29th after the second shoot. <laughs> Dunkley, as Mike said, uh, up in the fourth, 12.9. Uh, Elvira Erberg just behind her. She, she should be able to outski Elvira. She looked a little tired on the first K and a half of the last lap, sort of rallied on the last 500 metres. And then we got uh, Francisca Preutz down in six at the moment. So Dunkley a lot to play for four but she's got a nine second gap between fourth and third that is going to be very very difficult to bridge still starting it's a long old evening especially when all the favorites are pretty much home and dry Just uh, looking at uh, Susan Dunkley's journey, she started quite slow coming in for the first shoot and she really has upped her game uh, along the track. So hopefully Susan Dunkley can put in a great last lap. There may be a slim chance of a podium, but fourth place right now. Well, Yulia Shima's uh, certainly putting in a shift here. This looks very, very encouraging. Uh, certainly buoyed by the fact that she has cleared all 10 targets into fifth in a bit of a battle with Susan Dunkley, who started behind her. That's uh, a really good fighting effort from uh, Shima. Puskachikova for the Czech Republic. Have the Czechs got it right? I've been all the way back to the early splits, Mike. There's no indication to me that the tracks are getting quicker later on. Lien, who started 64, is uh, 20th fastest, and she's the highest of those who started after num bib number 50. Yes, it doesn't seem like a, a miracle. It, well, when you get miracles when the sun goes down and the sky opens up, but uh, maybe the local team thought it was the temperature would plummet to minus four or minus five. It hasn't. Twenty-first position for Skarshikova. One twenty-eight behind, missing one target. Oh, 
Bajima being uh, cheered on by the Ukrainian team and uh, they're excited to see this. They've not had a huge amount of success this year. Great to see a shoot clear. Still got some about 150 metres to go. We're looking... We're looking at top five, if she can just keep the pace going. But if she loses another second and a half, she could be down as far as seven. Uh, I think she's going to survive, though. What's she got? Some five seconds left to come inside Alan Bekova. She's just going to manage that. Good effort and a good fight from Yuli Jima. Shima, bit 47, a late starter, a late midfield starter, because some still have to start yet. Here's Davidova still to get underway. But Shima, second last week with the same score, and only 9.3 seconds behind Ekhoff last week, so her ski speed not as good this week. Susan Dunkley's dropping off, sadly, in terms of ski pace on the last lap. Yeah, if she drops uh, only three seconds, look at that, all the way from fourth down to ninth. Uh, which sounds bad, but, uh, well, actually, she's gone to 28 seconds behind. Uh, those behind her coming out of the range for the second time, the next five all within a second and a half. So it was always going to be a battle for Dunkley, and I think she's probably wishing that she had an earlier start. But she's shot 0-0. Zero, zero. Jima, incidentally, getting two 0-0s zero, zero in succession. There are athletes that go the whole way through the season without getting a perfect score. Shima is not one of them. And I think, uh, mentioned earlier, Davidova just about to start. Shervatova will start later uh, in the last five. And, and they had the eighth and the tenth fastest ski times in the pursuit competition last weekend. Still only five in the finish with the perfect score, Mike. Uh, with conditions like we've had today, that's not particularly good. Just explain, um, you know, obviously there's, there's no daylight left now, whereas there was when they were zeroing their weapons. Explain what happens to the sighting. So in the daylight, you've got great vision all around you, and you've got, you've got a, your pupil is, uh, is, is quite tightly closed, uh, and you've got brilliant vision. The lights go down. Yes, you've got stadium lights, but it's much more difficult to get clarity through the rear sight, fore sight, to the target. It's a little blurred, and that does put you off. Less effective. Dunkley, Dunkley across the line, 37, so just hangs on in top 10 at the moment. May well stay there. So a replay of uh,